Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to drape a set of contour lines that look like this or a 3D surface in Google Earth. For this tutorial, we'll be using freely downloaded SRTM elevation raster data from USGS and we'll also be using QGIS as our GIS tool. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. All right, uh, assuming that we do not really have the georeferenced contours for our area of interest, we can generate those contours by ourselves using a GIS tool like QGIS, assuming that we have the elevation data for that particular region or for that particular area. And this is quite straightforward. If we don't have the elevation data, we can download uh, SRTM digital elevation model data absolutely for free from USGS Earth Explorer web portal, as you can see over here. All you have to do is simply navigate to your area of interest and demarcate the corresponding uh, region. And after that, you'll be able to quite simply download the elevation data just in a matter of a few minutes. And I have already done a tutorial showing you the entire process. So, so in case if you want to download your DEMs or digital elevation models beforehand, I encourage you to check out this tutorial first. You can access the tutorial simply by clicking on the link that you're seeing right now. And, uh, and I'm going to continue this tutorial assuming that you have already downloaded your DEMs. So after that, we can go ahead and open up QGIS because first I'm going to use QGIS to generate the contours from those digital elevation model data. And after that, we can transform that data into Google Earth. All right, so this is my QGIS interface. And as you can see over here, I have already navigated to the folder that I'm working in, which is this uh, visualizing contour maps in Google Earth folder. And these two are actually two DMs which I have downloaded. One corresponds to Mount Fuji in Japan. If I drag it and drop it over here. And uh, just for reference, maybe I can go ahead and add a base map so that you guys can see which regions of the world we are actually referring to. So this style is getting placed covering a region which includes Mount Fuji in Japan. And this other tile that I have over here. And if I zoom to the particular layer, you can see that this particular DEM tile is covering these parts of Grand Canyon, which is located in, in the US. So I'm going to do the conversion for both of these different tiles and we'll see how it looks in Google Earth. So for the time being, let's get started with Mount, Mount Fuji. So using this original DEM tile, I have actually shaved off some parts which I don't really need. If I drag this uh, elevation Mount Fuji DEM into my working space and if I deactivate this, you can see that I have already selected a small targeted part of my area of interest. And I'm going to use this particular piece of DEM to generate my contour lines. So generating the contour lines is actually quite easy and straightforward. All you have to do is go to your processing toolbox that you can see over here. And if you cannot see that, you can go to processing and make sure that you have activated the processing toolbox. And after that, you can search for contour. And under GDAL, you can see there's one tool called contour. So you can simply go ahead and double click that. And what this tool does is it's simply making use of the digital elevation information that we have over here. And it's creating contour lines based on a given contour interval. And this is something that we need to specify. So again, our input layer is going to be the elevation of Mount Fuji and the interval between the contours. I'm going to specify about 150 meters. As you can see over here, the elevation values are actually in meters. So I'm going to specify the contour interval to be 150. And right over here, I'm going to save this to a file called contour file of uh, Mount Fuji. And the file type, I'm going to save this as an S3 shape file. So after that, we can simply go ahead and click save and run. And you can see that just in a matter of seconds, it actually generated all the, the corresponding contours. You can double check a few pieces of information simply by going to this identify tool. And if you pick, let's say one of these lines, you can see that the elevation is 1200 over here. And the next line, 1350 and it keeps on rising and if you check the elevation right over here somewhere at the top you can see that the elevation is 3600 meters so just like that we can get the indication that the transformation of uh, digital elevation data into contour lines worked quite smoothly as we expected and the next task would be to convert this file into a file that can be read by google earth and the file format that we are going to use for that particular purpose is going to be KML. 
But just before that, let's open up the attributes table of this file and we'll see what we have over here. So you can see that for each contour line, we have the ID and the elevation columns. The ID column is actually something that we don't really need. So we can click on this toggle editing mode and delete the columns that we don't really need. So it's going to be ID, which we don't really need. So it's going to get removed just like that. And after that, I can click back on this button and save the edits. And now I'm going to convert this file into a KML file. For that, right click over here, go to export and save features as. And the file format is not going to be s shape file anymore. Now it's going to be KML, which can be read by Google Earth. And the file name, I'm going to name it as Mount Fuji. Google Earth and you can simply go ahead and save and click OK. And now if I navigate back to my actual uh, folder using Windows Explorer, you can see right over here the KMZ file which or, or the KML file in this case which got generated which can be read by Google Earth. So I'm going to right click and open that file and that should take me into the corresponding place because because this KML file is already georeferenced and it get placed exactly where it's supposed to be. And just like this, you can see how the contour variation happens around Mount Fuji in Japan. And even if you just go ahead and click on one of these lines, you can see that part of the attribute table actually gets opened and it indicates the corresponding elevation. Over here, it's 1200. And if I click somewhere over here, you can see that it's 2250. If I click somewhere over here, it's about 3000. So just like that. And similarly, if I go over here to one of these low elevation areas, you can see that it's just 300, uh, a bit closer to the sea level. So this is how it looks for a mountain. All right, now let's head back to QGIS and we'll see how we can do the same process for the Grand Canyon. So open up QGIS again, and I think we can deactivate all of these layers that we don't really need. And now from here, I'm going to pick the elevation raster, which corresponds to Grand Canyon. I'm going to zoom into that layer and, and we can pick the same tool that we took contour and set the contour interval to be, let's say about 120 this time. And that's in meters. I'm going to save this file, Contour Grand Canyon, going to be a shape file. And after that, we can simply hit run. And now you can see that the tool ran quite successfully. I think I would like to have my contour interval reduced just a bit so that I can have a bit more contour, especially in these uh, low elevation areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this layer and I'm going to run the tool again. And this time my Input is going to be Elevation Grand Canyon and the contour interval I'm going to specify to be about 80. And I'm going to save it to Contour Grand Canyon. And this is, let's say, version two. And after that, we can run the tool. Yeah, I think I'm quite, quite satisfied with this contour formation. And we can go to the attributes table and again, put this to be in the editable mode and go to delete field, get rid of the ID, which we don't really need and save it. And you can even do a quick inspection simply by taking this tool right over here. And we can have a look at the elevation ranges over here. It's about 720 and this one should definitely be lower than that. So it's 640. Right over here, it's also 640. And this small one is also 640. And when you go up, yeah, it's 1200 over here. So let's project this to Google Earth simply by going to export and save features as it's already KML over here. And this time I'm going to name this as Grand Canyon Google Earth. And the rest can remain as it is. Click OK. All right, after that, if I try to find that file which I just generated, that's going to be this file. And if I double click over there, 
it's going to take me right into Grand Canyon over here and by the way guys if you cannot see this 3D view make sure that you have clicked this terrain option right over here and and also if you go to tools and options from here you can sort of play around with the vertical exaggeration I have set it to be the maximum which is 3 from there you can change your weave just a bit like this and you can have a look at how the contours get placed within these different parts of the Grand Canyon. Now for example if I click right over here you can get the elevation that's 1440 as opposed to some of these low lying areas. Let's say if I were to click on this line you can see that the elevation is 640. So I guess that's about it for this tutorial guys. I guess you got the basic idea of how to create contours using digital elevation models and then how to transform that information into a file that can be read by Google Earth and to finally use the Google Earth software to, to view your contours or basically overlay your contours on top of the land surface. If you do have any questions, don't forget to add them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So thanks a lot for watching guys and do not forget to like and subscribe if you would like to stay tuned for this kind of interesting uh, GIS related tutorials on a weekly basis. I'll see you again with another tutorial.